after you've installed and launched brackets, at this point, you should have all of the tools that you're going to need to be successful in this course. So just a quick checklist. Make sure you've installed brackets and launched it. Second, make sure you've installed Google Chrome. And third, optional but highly recommended, make sure you have a GitHub account. After you've done all these three things and launched brackets, go ahead and click this icon on the top right here called Live Preview. Launching Live Preview. Before you launch Live Preview, it'll give you a little bit of a message saying that this feature is only available on Google Chrome and, and whatnot, which is fine. But this is the most unique feature about brackets. And this is the biggest reason I chose to use it for educational purposes for this course. Because watch what happens when I go inside specific elements in the HTML file. When I go inside getting started with brackets, it highlights the element on Google Chrome. In Chrome, when I click on this is your guide, it highlights that element in brackets. This two-way binding between brackets and Google Chrome is what makes it really easy to use and get started with front-end development. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, in my opinion, this is a great way to get started with web development. At the same time, it's also a double-edged sword because really it's kind of a crutch because when you become proficient with front-end web development, you should be able to automatically look at a, a, a tag, like a, a paragraph tag, which is what this is. You should be able to automatically look at a paragraph tag or any tag in HTML and recognize what block of text it's going to render on the web browser. So without further ado, let's go ahead and, and set up brackets a little bit further. I'm going to exit out of this. I just wanted to show you this live preview feature because we're going to be using this in the course. And now let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to create a new folder in my desktop and call it web. And I'm going to start by just adding the hello world HTML file inside the web folder. Then I'm going to go into brackets and I'm going to click on the getting started icon right here and press open folder. And I'm going to go onto my desktop and open the web folder. Then I'm going to click on the hello world.html. And as you can see, brackets has automatically added some tags to our hello world.html file. In case you don't see these tags yet, that's perfectly fine. We can go ahead and just start from scratch here. Just to show you how an HTML file is constructed. We'll start by creating a tag and then start with an exclamation mark and do doc type HTML and then close the tag. This tells the browser what to expect. This is standard syntax that is good practice to put in front of all of your HTML files. It's not required. Your browser will automatically add it in if it's not there but it is good practice to include. Now what is required is an HTML tag. So I'm going to start by doing an, a less than sign HTML and you can see HTML comes up as an autocomplete tag with brackets. So I'm going to press enter and then I'll close the tag and you can see brackets automatically creates a closing tag to match our opening tag. The HTML tag is required for all HTML documents that use the full features of HTML. One way to remember how to construct an HTML document is to remember that it's very similar to a person because it has a body and on top of the body it has a head. And I can't emphasize keyboard shortcuts enough because keyboard shortcuts will help you become a very productive developer or web designer. It'll also give you a chance to get very well acquainted with your text editor. So after you've created a head and body tag, add an indentation inside of the head and inside the body. And inside the head tag, we'll want to create a title tag. Finally, we get to the point where we can add text. 
and let's call the title of our page my first web page and once we've entered my first web page let's go ahead and launch the live previewer again it's pretty empty but we do see that there is a title on the top of the page and it's called my first web page so to give you an idea most of this code in the HTML file is what we call templating code everything except the title is a template so wouldn't it be nice if we could generate this template automatically for every single HTML file? Well, some text editors do come built in with that. For now, we're going to avoid that because again, it is a little bit of a crutch. It's good to know the building blocks of the HTML file. So for the first few lectures, we're going to generate the template from scratch for each new HTML file that we create. Now, before I forget, let me add, add the title back in. And now let's go to the really interesting parts, the body. The body contains the bulk of what we'll be writing in our HTML file. And there are a few really important tags that we should know about. Now, before we get into the most important tags, I just want to cover a little bit of a conceptual understanding. I'll often use the words tags and elements. And in many ways, the two are interchangeable. But specifically, it's important to understand the distinction between a tag and an element. A tag is just the title. The beginning of this title is an opening tag, and then the end of this title is a closing tag. However, the combination of the opening tag and the closing tag creates the title element. And we'll get into a little bit more of the nuances in HTML in the next few lectures. But for now, let's get into the most common tags you should know about when working with an HTML document. Think of the HTML document as a word processor on the web. And with any word processor like Microsoft Word, the first thing you generally want to do is create a heading. To do that, HTML comes built in with the H1 tag. So let's create an H1 tag. Again, it's less than sign, h1, greater than sign, and then the closing tag is again a less than, then a, then a slash, then a closing h1, and then a greater than sign. In order to enter the text, we have to go in between the opening tag and the closing tag and say, hello, web browser. And we can see as we typed that, the text hello web browser automatically rendered in our web browser in Chrome. Another important tag to know about is a paragraph tag. Whereas the H1 tag is a heading that's used to create titles of HTML documents. Again, not this title, but, but more so a human readable title. The paragraph tag is used to create the main body of a document. Again, it's important to know the distinction between the opening tag and the closing tag. Then inside and in between the two tags, this time we're going to press enter to give ourselves some nice spacing and then write our paragraph. Hello, web browser. My name is Yatit. And I want to give you some information about HTML. An interesting property about the H1 tag here is that you often want headings to be different sizes, right? You don't necessarily want to use the same sized heading for the entire document. Sometimes you might have a, a title, uh, a subtitle, and it turns out that just like there's an H1 here, there's also an H2 that's used for subtitles. So let's create an H2 subtitle. And then underneath our subtitle, let's create another paragraph tag and enter some text inside this paragraph tag. Isn't HTML easy? I'm sure you know a lot about HTML. Web browser. Especially because you are the one displaying it to me. Now let's add some spacing here for better readability. And now let's press enter a couple of times 
and start another paragraph. Hey, web browser. Oh, wait a second. We just pressed enter a few times, but the text is still on the same line. Well, if we want to create text on a separate line, there are two ways to accomplish this. One is that we can put this inside a separate paragraph tag. So create another paragraph tag, add some spacing for better readability, and say, hey, web browser. But you don't necessarily want to create a separate tag every time you want to enter a line break, right? That's maybe a little bit annoying sometimes. So another way to do this is to enter a line break, which is its own tag by pressing the less than sign, br, and greater than sign. Now I'll get into what this is in just a second, but now let's put our text back in and make sure it's displaying on a new line. And it is, but notice the difference in spacing. When we enter a break tag, this is, which is what this is called, it goes directly underneath the line and starts a new line. But when we create a new paragraph tag, notice that extra line that it creates. This is a very subtle difference, but spacing is something that you should get used to noticing right now because even the tiniest amount of spacing can affect the experience of navigating in your web page. I think a break tag is a little bit easier to get around and to use. So I'll actually enter a second break tag and continue the paragraph. Hey web browser, let me tell you a bit more about HTML. Now before I forget, let's get back to what this what this break tag really is. Notice that we do have an opening tag and then we're adding a slash similar to a closing tag at the end. This is what's called a self-closing tag, meaning it doesn't need a closing tag to create a line break. In fact, as of HTML5, even the closing slash in the break tag is optional. So you don't have to have the slash and the web page will still function as you might expect. But for cross-browser compatibility, we're going to include the closing slashes and keep them in our break tags. As a quick review, all HTML documents are required to have an HTML tag. The doc type HTML is optional, but will be added in by the browser if it's not there. But the HTML tag is required in addition to the head tag, which has certain properties and, and additional sub tags. In addition to the HTML element and the head element, the body is also required in an HTML file. And this is where the bulk of our document will actually go. Inside the body, to create a header, we use the H1 tag. To create a standard paragraph, we use the P tag. HTML's headings also have a number following the H, which represents the size of the heading. Finally, a paragraph tag represents one paragraph. In order to create a new paragraph, we either have to create a new p tag with a with a closing p tag, or we can use the break self closing tag in order to enter a line break where we want. In the next video, we'll dive into a few more advanced features around paragraphs, headings, and other tags that are important to know.